to remember. Um, the radial and ulnar sideways superimposed and perpendicular to the IR. Palmer surface perpendicular to the IR. So you want it just like this. The palm mark, like this, your palm, it's perpendicular to the IR. And let's just say that thumb needs to be relaxed out of the way. The biggest mistake people make on that extension right there, by the way, this is lateral extension we're looking at first, not fan lateral, is they'll put that thumb on top of the other fingers. As she said, you got to get that thumb out of the way because we need to see that thumb separate from the other digits. And to make sure to extend digits two to five, superimposing the phalanges. First digit, uh, uh, sorry, first digit abducted to right angle to uh, palm and center at the MCP joint, the second MCP joint. And make note of that because that's different from your PA and lateral. It's PA, I'm sorry, PA and oblique. If you remember PA and oblique at the third MCP, for the laterals, it's going to be at the second MCP. Good key point to remember there. So if the, if the thumb is supposed to be abducted to a right angle, um, is that image correct? Um, that is correct in the image, yes. I don't know what that means by right angle. Right. Like, oh, it's not going to be like that. No, it's it just, it just means basically like just as long as it's out of the way. Sure, just relax the thumb down. A lot of patients are going to do this, like when you oh, tell them to do a karate that. chop, they're going to do this. And that's what also the say is, um, can you please extend your hand like this and do a karate chop? That will help people be like, oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. They'll do this, but then you just tell them to relax the thumb to the side. Exactly. We're good. Okay, so now this is the fan lateral. The forearm should be on the table with the elbow flexed in 90 degrees. Same thing. Uh, hand resting on the medial ulnar surface, thumb side up, lateral medial projection. Uh, radial and ulnar styloid superimposed and perpendicular to the IR, same thing. Palmar surface perpendicular to the IR, same thing. Um, fan digits, uh, you need to fan the digits with the phalanges individually separated, so make sure that they are separating. And I know that some patients have trouble doing this. You're gonna notice that. So I always just tell them, make an okay sign, and then put, uh, make sure you grab on both sides of the patient's hands and where the wrist is, because you also want the wrist to be in a true lateral too. And then after that, they'll make the okay sign. You center at the second MCP. Sorry, I'm over here just talking. Let me show you that. <laughs> so you want to make sure that the wrist in this part right here, this part right here, should be on uh, perpendicular, okay? So you want to make sure your wrist isn't going like this or going uh, obliquing. So, um, just make sure you grab on both sides and then make them do the okay sign because I feel like that helps a lot. And then it's, uh, same centering point, uh, second MCP. So in other words, that okay sign will work for your oblique and your fan lateral. You just have to adjust the hand accordingly from 45 to a true lateral. And make sure you separate <laughs> digits one and two. Because people will often leave them together like this. Make sure you separate the fingers before you shoot the x-ray. We talked a little bit about this last time. I think she's going to hit this on the next couple slides. Remember, there's a difference between those two laterals, depending on what has been ordered, the patient's capabilities, and what we're looking for. So for a lateral extension, the main reason we'll do that x-ray is for foreign body evaluation, whereas the fan lateral will usually be your go-to gold standard for a lateral, so you can see the fingers and the hand on that true lateral position, checking for fractures. Okay, for the lateral hand, this uh, structure shown in evaluation criteria. Anatomy from fingertips to distal radius and uh, ulna. Sorry, let me this side. A hand in a true lateral position. Superimposed phalanges, individual seen on fan lateral. Superimposed metacarpals, superimposed distal radius and ulna. So these right here are the phalanges. Superimposed. The metacarpals are superimposed over each other. You have the distal phalanx of the uh, first phalange. Uh, you have the proximal <coughs> phalanx. And you also have the first metacarpal right here. The profile. Also, these are the carpal bones right here. And like I said, you also want the wrist.
this to be uh, in a true lateral also. So this is the radius superimposing over the ulna. Second bullet point is the big thing on that one. So lateral uh, lateral and extension best for localizing foreign bodies and metacarpal fracture displacement. So this is a gold star right here. And I should have bolded that third yeah, bullet point. Yeah, this one should well. be. I was reading it. Lateral fan uh, the lateral fan lateral best is shown uh, to show all the indiv individual phalanges. Look, you got me okay talking right there. <laughs> And also you want to be able to see the bony trabecular uh, detail surrounding the tissue, so. Question. So the third bullet point would have been on the fan lateral? I think it's just, for this one, he's just stating like why we look at the two different ones. Okay. Yeah, just to make sure you can differentiate between the two, because they are both done for different reasons. Okay. That's a very key point to remember. Also, if the patient just cannot manipulate their hand or fingers, you'll go with that extension, of course, because they get comfortable. But, you know, try to go and do that fan lateral. Most of the time, it's your more optimized view. Okay. So these are the two different uh, positions. So this is the lateral hand extension. And this one is the lateral hand fan lateral. As you can see, the phalanges are separated. And these ones are superimposed. But see, they're still the same on the meta, uh, metacarpal. They're still superimposed. The only difference is, is that we're looking at the phalanges on Is it the first or the fifth? No, that's the first. That's first. the thumb. Mm -hmm. so okay, and then this one? Happen. So approximately. Okay, but now I want you to go into a little bit more detail. Oh, what yeah. area? Oh, okay. 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 okay, okay. Then right here? The carpet. The third of the carpet. Oh, that was kind of... <laughs> Body of the first medical. Okay, body of the first. Okay. This one is kind of they're both superimposed, so just tell me what both these are. Radius and ulna. Radius and ulna. Radius and ulna. Okay. Just make it sure. Just make it sure. Okay. Now we're gonna go to the wrist. Uh, these are the main positions that we'll be talking about. We have the PA, the lateral, the PA oblique, PA projection and ulna de deviation position, the scaphoid, um, PA axial stetcher, hmm, I never heard that one. stetcher method, carpal canal tangential uh, gain our heart method. There's a few that you don't have in lab there, of course, guys, if you need to know them for the registry. Did we ever talk about the stretch? 
No, not in Bond Trader. Not in Bond Trader. That's something that you had to add that's from barrels and is on the registry as well. Wow. And those missing things. Well, good thing I'm running. Yes. <laughs> Why don't you guys? <laughs> Okay, guys ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, PA wrist, okay? So the patient will be positioned seated at the at end of the table. Flex the arm into a 90 degree uh, angle. Place the axilla in contact with the table. So just like Mr. Donahue always says, you wanna make sure that that humerus is up. Um, align shoulder, elbow, and wrist joints in the same plane, part position. Wrist, uh, wrist joint space in the center of the IR, elbow flex 90 degrees, and then flex digits slightly to place wrist closer to the IR. So you'll see certain texts that will literally ball up the fist like this, and they'll put the, the phalanges underneath. Well, that can also um, cause the phalange being inside the carpal, so you kind of want to loosen up the phalanges. You want to kind of relax. Right, so not like a full fist, so you'll see people fist. do this, and that's gonna go into the anatomy. See, so you kind of want to just relax it, and that also brings it's the more, wrist you down. To, but it's more it's a lot we just, I mean, you can do it straight out. So just like this. They recommend for comfort. Not like this, because it's gonna cover the anatomy, just like this. Yeah, not essential, but yeah, that's a very Make important a point on number three, guys. I'm, I'm sorry, that third bullet point about flexing the digits. Please put a star by that about putting the wrist closer to IR, because you'll see some texts as well, just put the hand straight out. Oh, yeah. And that's actually gonna give you OID on the carpal bones. You want that slight little fist to bring it closer and reduce that OID of those carpals, because the carpal bones are the star of our show on these x-rays. We say wrist, we're talking about those carpal bones, that's the star of our show. I mean, that kind of works too. So it's just, it's more recommended to Okay, so the central rest is going to be perpendicular to the mid-carpal area, seen right here. Uh, IR and collimation, radiation field 2.5 inches, proximal and distal to the wrist joint and one inch on the sides. So for this image, it's it looks pretty good. Um, they can collimate it just a little bit more, probably. Yes. When it says mid carpal area, guys, a little trick for that. If you feel the size of the wrist, you can feel it on yourself. You can feel those styloid processes. If you line up your horizontal line approximately where those styloid processes are, that's basically your mid carpal area. It's a good little, um, it's a good little indicator. Because when it says mid carpal, it's not really telling you a palpation point, but you can palpate the size of the wrist. And for this marker placement, I would do it on the lateral side. I'd move this one over here because it's where the thumb is. But that's just me. Okay, what do you mean you do, uh, what do, you mean you do it on the lateral side? You do it on so the lateral side. This is not the lateral anatomical side. Position. In, in anatomical position. So if my thumb is like this, this is the lateral side, right? So even if I flip my hand like this and I do this, this is still the lateral side. Okay, evaluation criteria, distal radius and ulna, carpals and proximal half of metacarpals. So just enough up here, all the way to the radius and the ulna. You get like enough that you can see. Um, no excessive flexion of the digits to overlap and obscure the metacarpals. No rotation in carpal, metacarpal radius and ulna. Open radio, radio ulnar joint space. Um, bony trabecular detail and surrounding soft tissues should be visualized. So I'm gonna do some anatomy with you guys. Can you guys tell me what this one is? Scaphoid. Scaphoid. Well, it's not labeled, now, now I'm looking at it. <laughs> What's this one? Guys, you guys, I'm so, I'm so passionate in this, you know? I need, I need some energy. All right, what, what's this one? This is one. Okay, okay. What's the camera? Yeah. Trap pole. 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 Trap p
3D wrist, one of the easiest comps you'll ever get, by the way. Yeah, I wish you could do those all day. Yeah. Me too. All right, PA oblique wrist. The part position is uh, upper extremity position as described for previous wrist pr uh, projection. Um, from lateral position, rotate palmar surface toward the IR wrist uh, until wrist forms a 45 degree angle. And guys, make sure when you do this 45 degree angle, you're not just looking at the hand because you need make sure that you're feeling on the wrist that mm -hmm. it's in a true 45 because sometimes when I remember when I first started I was just like oh the hand is in a 45 but we're looking at the wrist that's what we're looking at so make sure that that's in a true 45. Um, from pronate position rotate palmar surface away from the IR until wrist forms a 45 degree angle. Support wrist with a 45 degree angle wedge sponge. Mm, you're not going to really see that. Uh, <laughs> uh, CR um, perpendicular to mid carpal area, just distal to the radius. So it's still the uh, same central ray. You want to demonstrate it for us as a picture? Yeah, right I, I, I don't know. I see. Picture, maybe I was missing oh, the picture. I, I'm not sure that it's just a very good degree. It's She made a great point, guys, about not just obliquing the hand, because you can oblique the hand 45 degrees and the wrist still be PA. You make sure the wrist is what you're actually putting in 45. both sides and then you're able to feel like it looks like a 45. Sometimes it just depends on person's anatomy. You might have to do a repeat, but most of the time you can see, you know, you can look at it. Whenever you get to that point, I get what you're saying. It's not really, you just have to kind of feel for it. You want me to do it on you? Because you look like, what? It's funny. So, come here. Are you closer to me? Come here. Are you closer to me? Mm -hmm. 
we're not so we're not looking at the flanges. We're looking just right the centering right here. The collimation here. would be right here to here. And he said the reason for that is because you guys need it. You want more of the wrist. <coughs> yeah, okay. No, we and don't. We can watch it. Yeah, I'll be sure you're gonna have extra light here. So then you don't want extra light here. So, so you see your hand. You aim here instead of here. Bring it forward. Okay, bring it flat first. Bring it forward a little bit more. You fill on the side. This is your this is the joint right here, right? And then you're gonna go like this. Perfect. So, a little bit down, right there. So I always put my fingers underneath, and I kind of like bring it down a little bit because you don't want it too much like this because that'll be a lateral, right? So you're like right here. Cool. And then you center right there. Boom. Cool. Perfect. The picture's in your book, by the way. Sorry, the picture's all the time. Sorry, yeah. It is in your, is in your book, though. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, okay, so the evaluation, distal radius and ulna carpals and proximal half of metacarpals work by the degree of rotation of the anatomy slightly inter, what is, what is this? Interosseous. Interosseous space between the third, fourth, and fifth metacarpal bodies. A slight overlap of distal radius and ulna. Uh, carpal, carpals on lateral side of the wrist. Trapezium and distal half of the scaphoid without superimposition. And bony trabecular due to uh, and surrounding soft tissue should be visualized. So, based on this evaluation criteria, this is a great test question here. Yeah. Who's the star of our show on this 45 degree oblique? The scaphoid. The scaphoid yes. and the trapezium. Just going to have three of them with that superimposition gives a little better visualization of them in particular. So, that scaphoid, because what did I say about scaphoid? It's the most what? Fractured. Fractured. The most fractured carpal bone. Where's all my pictures? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, okay. We just have a weird period of no pictures. Okay. <laughs> I'm it's, in sorry. Book, it's in your book, too, guys. You're doing this in lab as well. Um, okay, so this is a PA projection in ulnar deviation position. The part position that we're going to be pushing at is the upper extremity resting on the table. Axial in contact to place entire upper extremity in the same plane. Elbow flex uh, 90 degrees. Wrist place in center of IR. Uh, flex digit slightly to place wrist closer to the IR. Without moving the forearm, turn the hand outward until the wrist is in extreme ulnar deviation. CR perpendicular to the scaphoid. So for this one, it's like the, this one's a snuff box, right? Okay. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna turn the hand. It's gonna be just like this. And you're gonna, the, the center ray is gonna be going right here, central ray. And you're gonna turn the hand until it goes <laughs> into the snuff box. That little hole. That little right hole that, you know, which is what you talking about. Is. So if you like flex your thumb, if you guys flex your thumb up, you're gonna see this indention, you can kind of feel. This one's a 10 there, degree, guys. right? No, no, so oh, this is a major change recently okay. because this is the 2023 uh, barrels, the newest edition. A big change that they've removed the 10 degree angulation on this exam. This used to have a 10 degree angulation towards the patient, but it's now a perpendicular situation you see right here. So keep that in mind because you'll probably see a lot of tech still putting an angle on this exam, mm -hmm. but per the curriculum, we are no longer putting an angle on this exam. So it's a the major change, wrong. yeah. So the book, the book is correct. Oh, okay. There's no angle. They're making me, they're making me happy right now. <laughs> but I'm upset because I was stressing about it. <laughs> yeah. I need to tell your class that tomorrow. If y'all put your notes. Try to remind me if I don't forget. Okay, because I think we had a test and it said something about 10 degrees. Yeah. I remember, yeah, it was on that one. I was like. Yeah. I hate when they make these little changes and conditions like this. It's, it throws everything off. Okay, so same position, ulnar deviation, um, distal radius and ulnar carpals and proximal half of metacarpals. 
The scaphoid with adjacent articulations are open. No rotation of the wrist. Maximum ulnar deviation as revealed by the angle form between the longitudinal axis of the ulna and the longitudinal axis of the fifth metacarpal and bony trabecular detail and surrounding soft tissue. It's a great test question, guys. What is the best view you can do to isolate and better view the scaphoid? Oh, oh, this is right here. That is your that is your scaphoid view there. That is a registry question. Maybe that's why I didn't have no pictures. Because <laughs> it was probably an angle. Oh, I'm gonna look at the PowerPoint and then I'm gonna say that. Let's let them take Sorry. a break. Okay. Let's take a 10-minute break. Ten minutes. Ten minute break, guys. Mm -hmm. Be back at 915 sharp and we shall continue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.